Have you had any moments this week where you've been afraid or something happened and it terrified you? Well, this week I had an opportunity to hang out with my eight-year-old grandson and uh, we spent the day at home. Uh, he did his schoolwork and then it was a beautiful day. So I suggested that he go out in the backyard and shoot some hoops. He loves basketball and I had a phone call to meet, make and so he headed out and I kept listening to the um, basketball bounce and everything was going great until it got quiet. So I ended my meeting and I headed out only to see something that forced the adrenaline to spike my heart to race. He had built a tower, it was like five foot tall, with a fire pit and a flower pot he inverted on top and he climbed to this next level to accomplish his goal. And it set me off on a panic and I was like, what? And he turned around with a big smile on his face, excited because his one-handed dunk shot was successful. Thankfully, he was secure and in a position that he thought maybe I could even come and hand him the ball. But instead, I pulled out my phone to take a picture. And after helping him down then next, we talked about his creativity and we discussed some better and safer choices. His imagination and creativity throughout the day were admirable. He used every opportunity. Although when I sent a picture of his accomplishment to his parents, I'm not sure that they were so impressed about his or probably my judgment. In 2 Timothy 1.7, Paul is talking to his friend Timothy and he says, as a follower of Jesus, God has not given you a spirit of fearfulness, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. In the tension between our fear and faith, you can grow stronger. So it's important to remember where to put your faith. I'm thankful that my grandson built a strong base. He wasn't afraid, his feet were secure, and he was on a mission. When your hope is built on a strong foundation, on a rock, you don't have to be afraid. You can stand firmly and confidently in God's love, and you can make good decisions, knowing that God will help you in every step. Listen to what David, a shepherd boy, a songwriter, a warrior, a leader, a king, and a man after God's heart writes in Psalm 62 too. He says, God only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress and my defense, and I will not be forsaken or discouraged. Whether there's a storm or whatever, whether there's a virus, there's peace and I'm gonna have courage. None of us wants to be shaken or discouraged or freaked out. However, in our human skin, it's impossible to be fully secure without God's help. The good news is God's available and he's waiting for you. And my challenge today is for you to seek God, ask his help. Start by reading the Bible. In Deuteronomy, it says, when we seek God, we'll find him when we seek God with our heart. So if you want your faith to grow, spend some time with God, do some self-feeding, listening, reading, studying, meditating, memorizing, and applying God's word in your life today. That's really the hard part, is doing what we know. Uh, in Hebrews 4.12, uh, the Bible says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it judges the thoughts and attitudes of our heart. So I wanna encourage you today uh, maybe it's to be like my grandson, to be fearless, and to, to get your feet grounded in a strong and on a rock, on a solid place. And I would suggest that's in Jesus, who lived and died and rose from the dead for you, so that you could have that confidence and strength and power. And then think about your mission. It's quite an adventure, and uh, I'm praying that God will help all of us to um, be brave in this process, in this day, and uh, be lights that help other people find the hope that we have in our faith in Jesus. Have a great day.